worked with you yesterday before you introduced the motion. You didn't sound confident that you would have the votes. Now you do. What does that tell you about where your confidence is at? What it tells me is that you're very poor at reading confidence. Okay. You said you actually so were going to succeed. Congressman, so at this point, do you think... You have the House of Representatives today. To whose benefit? People have called you a narcissist. People say there is to your benefit alone. To the benefit of you. And to Donald Trump. It's the benefit of this country that we have a better Speaker of the House than Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy couldn't keep his word. He made an agreement in January regarding the way Washington would work, and he violated that agreement. We are $33 trillion in debt. We are facing $2.2 trillion annual deficits. We face a de-dollarization globally that will crush Americans, working class Americans. Kevin McCarthy is a feature of the swamp. He has risen to power by collecting special interest money and redistributing that money in exchange for favors. We are breaking the fever now and we should elect a speaker who's better. Congress, 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 you said last night that Steve Scalise was a name that you floated to potentially be speaker. Where do things stand right now? If not McCarthy, then who? Well, uh, you know, the stages of grief, I think, are uh, in progress right now with some of my colleagues. I think there was a stage of denial, and I've certainly experienced a good amount of their anger, and now we appear to be headed toward bargaining. I think the world of Steve Scalise. I think he'd make a phenomenal speaker. Congressman Gates, at this point, do you think that the I'm speaker should be getting expelled? I'm afraid of $33 trillion in debt crushing the working people in my district. I'm afraid of the dollar losing its status as the global reserve currency. If they want to expel me, let me know when they have the Has vote. Congressman Gates, Congressman Gates, at this point, Congressman Gates, at this point. We've got less than 45 days left before you have to pass a budget, which is something that you've been wanting to do. Doesn't this just completely paralyze the House? I mean, we could see 15 more rounds. I don't think we will. Uh, I think Kevin McCarthy should take a hint. After 15 ballots to become speaker, after eight months of a failed speakership, and after removal uh, in this historic manner, I think we should move on and find somebody else. What's paralyzed the House of Representatives has been the failure of Speaker McCarthy. What paralyzed the House of Representatives was not taking up appropriations bills. We left for a six-week vacation while the appropriations process hung in the balance. And because I forced these people to take a few votes, you think I'm paralyzing the House of Representatives? I think the House of Representatives has been paralyzed for the last several decades as we've refused to pass a budget as we've governed by continuing resolution and omnibus bill. So I think that this represents the ripping off of the Band-Aid, and that's what we need to do to get back on track. Well, Congressman Gates, what do you say to your colleagues? Congressman Gates, what do you say to your colleagues? who argue you don't have another name right now. You don't have someone else who could get 218 votes. What do you tell those colleagues? Well, I would tell them that for certain, Kevin McCarthy can't get 218 votes, so let's try the next person. So how would, you would you be okay, okay with McHenry? Uh, with the pro tem, obviously. Uh, there would have to be a, a real meeting of the minds there. How do you pass something? If I'm sorry, someone else, you've had a question. I was going to let somebody else ask a question. question. Are you going to ask for uh, a guarantee from whoever is the, or, uh, floated as a candidate for the next speaker for them to actually move the appropriations process along in a speed that satisfies you? Yes. Congressman, at this so point, will you be what putting is... yourself forward for the speakership? Absolutely not. I have no desire to be speaker. How do you have What's your question? What's your question? You don't have 200 Republicans behind you. What's the path forward? I know we've already asked about names, but what about Emmer and others? I think the world is Tom Emmer. He'd make a great speaker. Congressman, are you going to... Have you spoken with Emmer? Have you spoken with Emmer? Uh, I've spoken with them, but I'll probably keep our conversations between us. What's Congressman, are you going to require... What was going through your head when the vote gaveled down and there was official McCarthy was the speaker? Just, we we got to move to the next step. You know, we, we are not at the end of this process, okay? At, at most, we're approaching halftime. Uh, we've got to be able to assemble a governing coalition. We have to build from a place of trust. The reason Kevin McCarthy went down today is because nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy has made multiple contradictory promises, and when they all came due, he lost he lost votes of people who maybe don't even ideologically agree with me on everything. Take, for example, my colleague from South Carolina, Ms. Mace. She's, she has different views than I do on a variety of subjects, but what we had in common, Kevin McCarthy lied to but all of us. But Congressman, hold on a second. You're, Congress talking, you're saying that nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. Can you talk about including yourself, about seven Republicans compared to about 200 and, and, and about, you know, some odd Republicans who actually do trust him. So can you kind of explain yes. that here? Well, as it turns out, 
getting 200 Republicans to trust you isn't enough to stay speaker. Compared to Congressman, at this point, at this point, would you require that any former President Trump about this since the ousting? Was he supportive of the what, of what you were doing? Uh, I have spoken to President Trump over the last several days. The ousting only occurred several minutes ago, so we haven't spoken during that time. Congressman, at this point, are you going to require that any speaker? He didn't think this was a good idea. He didn't want to see Republicans fighting with other Republicans. How do you respond to the former president? Uh, I, I would, uh, I would say that. Uh, my conversations with the former president leave me with great confidence that I'm doing the right thing. Did the former president call you today? What's Did the former president for call you Americans who are concerned about the future of the conservative agenda and the House GOP? Uh, I would say that the conservative agenda was being paralyzed by Speaker McCarthy. We hadn't even sent a subpoena to Hunter Biden. Our oversight was lackluster. Our spending priorities were misaligned. The top line budget was going to lead to more inflation, more debt, more challenges. So the best way to advance the conservative agenda is to move forward with a new speaker. So are you going to require? Are you going to require that any future speaker elected allows the motion to vacate to stay at a one-person threshold? Yes. So what other demands will you have? Considering that Steve Scalise votes in line with Speaker McCarthy most of the time, why should he want the job after this just happened? Well, that's a question for him, I guess, he's not already, me. He said he's uninterested. He's already said. He's I haven't uninterested. heard him say that. No, no, no. He's already well, what he said well, here's what I would say. Here's what I say. I think a lot of members are going to reflect on their thinking after this historic moment. I think anything that people have said before the McCarthy ouster uh, is probably uh, bearing less weight than the way people may be thinking about these questions after the McCarthy ouster. Mr. Gates, you had some positive game. comments about Steve Scalise yesterday and today. Will you yourself nominate Steve Scalise for Speaker of the House? Maybe. I, I want to see, I want to hear from him. I mean, I, I'm not here to make a judgment on where Mr. Scalise stands with his rehabilitation and recovery. I, I would give him the deference to be able to decide whether or not he'd like to put himself forward as a candidate, but he'd be the type of person that I could I could see myself supporting. There are many people, though. I, I could see myself supporting Tom Emmer. I could see myself supporting Mike Johnson of Louisiana. I could see myself supporting Jody Arrington of Texas. I could see myself supporting Kevin Hearn uh, of Oklahoma. And there are even people outside of the United States Congress, like Lee Zeldin, who are well thought of across every aspect of our conference. And, I may give Lee Zeldin a call and see if he's interested in the gig. Have Congressman, you, will you talk to the former you, president? You've succeeded in pushing the House to move forward with, with the appropriations process as you wanted. You've succeeded thank, in Thank you for that acknowledgement. Because I just heard on the floor a bunch of these McCarthy allies say, well, gosh, it's Kevin McCarthy who led us to this moment with uh, single subject appropriations bills. And in fact, the only work we've gotten done has been with a political gun to the Speaker's So you've head. gotten that accomplished. The former Speaker, I You've say. gotten the Speaker out. So what's next? Well, the next we got to elect a new speaker. Sorry, guys. How long do you think it's going to take? Are you running for governor of Florida in 2026? No. Excuse me. If nobody you support can get to a 